Hello, today we are going to work on the formations of solutions part two. Uh, we're going to talk about the properties of liquid solutions. There are three properties that we can change um, in a solution that will be different from the solute and the solvent. Um, the first one's conductivity, the second one is the freezing point, and the third one is going to be the boiling point. So we'll look at each of these individually and discuss how they change when we form a solution. Conductivity. If we have a solid ionic compound like sodium chloride, it is not going to conduct electricity very well. It's going to be a poor conductor of electric current. Salt water, on the other hand, is a great conductor of electric current. The reason for this is that in order to conduct electricity, we have to move a charge. When we dissolve something, the dissociation process causes us to have two ions. Ions are charged particles, and when they're in a solution, they're free to move around with the water molecules. So when we have a solution with ions in it, it'll conduct electric current very, very well. And the freezing and boiling point changes. Now, this is very important to us in Iowa, especially in the winter months. Um, why do we salt icy roads? Because the salt uh, will dissolve and cause water molecules to be separated more by chloride and magnesium ions. Those ions getting in the way of the formation of the ice will lower the boiling point, or excuse me, lower the freezing point, and it will also hold the molecules together and increase the boiling point. Um, same reason we add antifreeze to cars. Ethylene glycol is the uh, proper name for antifreeze, and it will raise the boiling point of water so that the engine doesn't start boiling water when it's running. And it will also lower the freezing point for us in the wintertime so that the engine block doesn't freeze into a solid block of ice causing the parts to break. Heat of solution. Uh, when a solution forms, there is going to be an attraction between the ions that is going to be broken. Then we are going to reform attractions between those ions and the water molecules. This is going to cause a change in the thermal energy, meaning that it's going to be exothermic or endothermic, just like a chemical reaction um, or a, any other phase change. It's going to have some sort of thermal energy accompanying it. Um, Sodium hydroxide is an exothermic reaction. Um, when I used to work at the chemical plant, we would make solutions of sodium hydroxide, and we'd put little pellets into a couple liter flask, mix it up, and as those pellets would start to dissolve, the flask would become quite, quite warm, and we'd have to be careful not to try to mix up too much at one time, or we'd have a dangerous situation. Ammonium nitrate, NH4NO3, um, is an endothermic reaction. It's going to absorb heat. This is actually the ingredients. Um, ammonium nitrate and water are the ingredients in the cold ice packs that go in med kits. You break the water open and mix it up with the ammonium nitrate. Uh, when that forms a solution, it's going to require energy. It's going to suck energy in from its environment and feel cold. That makes it a good compress for a sprained ankle. Uh, the factors that are going to affect the rates of dissolving, this is going to be important for us to talk about real briefly. Um, it's very similar to the things that can change the rate of reaction. The rates of dissolving can be affected by the surface area. More surface area, the easier things will dissolve. Um, stirring will also increase the rate of dissolving, as well as temperature, increasing the heat will make things dissolve faster.